lesson is on judging market tomatoes. One of the first things that we're looking for when we're, we're judging the tomatoes is condition. How clean it is, how blemish free it is, so it has a, a good solid presence in the retailer showcase. Besides condition, we also look for its uniformity in size, shape, and color. As you can see in this one, number one, it does have a very consistent uh, um, size and shape. But if we take a little closer look, it does have a few blemishes on it, as you can see here in this picture. Um, and I, I'd like to see just a little less red. Um, besides condition and uniformity, you're also looking for a, a quality. Uh, it, in other words, it's, it, it's ripe at the right time, it's fresh, it's crisp, it's clean, it's very, very edible. And this one ex is a good example um, of one that has great condition, it has good uniformity. And as you can see, as we pan around, uh, this is probably one of the uh, best in the class today. And if we look at sample number three, um, we're also looking for uh, not only condition and uniformity, we're also looking for quality, the edible portion as well as the freshness. This one, as you can see, has some blemishes. Also, it's a little bit more red, uh, which means it's a little bit more ripe and probably is not going to have a very good shelf life. But this zippering or, or scabbing that you see on it does affect the eye appeal and will uh, definitely um, may have some problems on the marketing side of things. And as we zoom in on number three, you can see the zippering. It's in much more uh, greater detail. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and go to number four. Look at number four. It, it kind of typifies a, a lack of trueness to type, which is our four, fourth characteristic. We'd love to see it um, really to its variety. That has aroma tomato in it, which is a little bit longer. In addition to that, it has one that is kind of undersized and not quite as global as we would like to see here today. So, as you can see, that's really our, um, our class today. I'd like to spend a few minutes with you just talking about judging and how you can use a scorecard that's located in the back of the Curricular Code Vegetable Crops Contest. So you go to the back page, there's the five criteria, condition, uniformity, uh, quality, trinity type, and size. The numbers on the right-hand side are the possible point va values um, that, that each criteria holds. So for condition, for instance, we're looking at the cleanliness, the eye appeal. Um, we'd like to see it very few of any blemishes. Number two, the second most important thing is its uniformity in size, shape, and color. Uh, this helps out not only in in the actual display of the vegetables, but also during shipping, uh, that, that's also. And, and when we're talking about processing them as well, uniformity is, is a big, big criteria. And then when we get to um, the third position, we look at quality. Uh, a quality has to do with how edible it is. It is, is it ripe? Is it crisp? Um, and those are the things you're kind of looking for in the quality department. And then a fourth position is how true to type it is. Um, each vegetable has a particular standard, a, a particular way it's supposed to look according to its variety. If you check on the USDA um, uh, criteria or score sheets, the standards, the grading standards, uh, you can get that online or on a, my website. And then on the size portion of it, that's the least important. It is important, um, but again, quality rules the day when we're talking about vegetables. So let's go ahead and take a look at our vegetables, our market tomatoes, and take a look at uh, what we've got. Let's look at number one first. Uh, number one, as you can see, it's extremely uh, clean. It does have a little bit of blemishes. It's very uniform. However, what I'd like to see a little bit uh, different on this one, if you notice the color, especially on two of them, are extremely a deep red. So they're not as firm or they're, uh, they're a little over mature, I think. So... I'll probably use it in the top pair, but definitely not on, uh, probably not in the top position today. So let's take a look at number two. Number two, as you can see in this particular picture, um, it's extremely um, uniform. It's very clean. There's little to no blemishes on it. It's very uniform in its size, shape, and color, and it's very true to type to the Ace uh, tomatoes because there's three different kinds. There's Ace, which is a medium size, a slicing a market tomato. And we have a beef stick, which is much larger, doesn't have as much solids in it, and then because we also have Romas. Romas primarily are cooking, but we're seeing more and more of it in the marketplace today. 
So these are Ace tomatoes, and number two is an excellent example of that. That's the one that's probably going to go to the top. And then on, um, if we look at three and four, and let's start with number three. Uh, in three, we have some problems with it. Um, there are plenty of blemishes on this. You can notice the kind of the scar in there, and it has a particular name. I'll tell you that in a minute. Uh, also, it, it's not as uniform as the other ones, the other plates we've seen. We have one that's kind of smaller than the other. But the biggest uh, problem it, it, it are those blemishes, and um, they're called it's called zippering. And somehow out in the field, it got scuffed or it grew a little fast or a little slow, and it causes that kind of scabbing or those uh, those marks. And it really takes away from the eye appeal and its ability to course sell it on the retailer showcase. And then number four, you'll notice that it looks pretty good in terms of its color and everything else, but it it, it lacks um, uniformity, and, and that's one of the uh, one of the, the big criteria, and also the trinus of type. So it has two two issues as aroma tomato um, in, in that particular group, which it shouldn't. I hope this part has helped. We're gonna go back to the the, the end of the video and kind of see what the, what the placing is and look at them one more time. The order is two one three four in these market tomatoes. I'm starting a class today with number two. Number two, I think, exhibits a uh, is a fun example of. Um, the best conditioned uh, vegetable in the class today. It's clean, it's bright, it's also a blemish free. It's highly uniform in its size, shape, and color. An excellent example of a true, uh, a true to type, um, type of uh, tomato. And that's why I place number two at the very top of the class. I don't think we're going to have a, a, a very a hard time marketing it. However, let's move to number one that I placed in second place today. It has a few blemishes. I like, and I grant that it has a fairly good condition. It's very uniform and true to type. However, because of the blemishes, and I think it's a tad bit overripe as well, so it's going to lessen its shelf life. Um, but uh, really, really, for those reasons, that's why I placed number one in, in the second position today. As I turn my attention um, to our third place uh, sample, you'll notice that we already have some problems. I grant that it's relatively uniform. But I really criticize and have place a third primarily because of the zippering. Uh, th those blemishes are going to um, probably um, lower I its eye appeal and its ability to, to be able to market it very effectively. So that's why I place it in number three. Um, I, I think the, the quality, the maturity is about right. But I had to place it in third because of the blemishes. And then number four uh, it is in last place today. It's my fourth uh, place um, tomato. It has a Roma tomato that I'm holding up right there. It's, a kind of, it's a more of a canning and cooking kind of uh, tomato where we have the other ones, the more global ones, are going to be our ace tomatoes. And they uh, exhibit some softness. And as you can see there, uh, it's, it's just not going to um, very grade very well in our, in our class today. And that's why I placed it 2-1.